Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you are back. If you are new, hi, my name's Rabbit and my pronouns are they, them. And uh, today's video is gonna be a little bit of like a DIY but also show and tell. So as usual with these kinds of videos, I like to kind of just make one as like an example and then just let you go free with your imagination but also provide an example box or several examples and like ideas of stuff that you could do um, in this specific style. So part of this video will be a tutorial, part of it will be showing my collection, and part of it will just be giving you what I think are really cute ideas for like things you could put in your Halloween box um, as like a gift for someone, especially if like me they are they have dietary restrictions and they might not be able to eat the chocolates that originally come in the box. So these would be like some cute ideas. Or if you wanted to give them the box of chocolates, but also like an extra cute kind of like spooky thing, these are some ideas for that. So yeah, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to decorate a kind of chocolate box for Halloween or spooky valentines or whatever kind of like gothic vampiric alternative whatever kind of valentines you want to do. Um, you could also just make these for yourself or make them as like storage boxes or whatever but I just think it's a really cute and fun, sweet idea for the holiday season. So let's get into it. First, I'll show you the tutorial. As usual, timestamps will be below, so feel free to skip around. Okay, let's get into it. So I'm starting out with this cardboard chocolate box that I got from the grocery store, but you could use a heart-shaped piece of paper, something from the dollar store, whatever you have on hand. I'm first removing the plastic wrap and taking out all the chocolates and setting those aside. Now I'm taking a piece of leftover scrap fabric from an old project. This is just some red velvet that's nice and stretchy and I'm cutting out the rough shape of it leaving a big gap between the fabric and the box so that I can wrap it around the edges. Then I'm taking my hot glue gun but if you're worried about it like not looking professional you could use an, some E6000 or something a little bit fancier and I'm gluing the piece of fabric all around and into the box. I was kind of worried that the box would have trouble fitting now that it had like an extra bit of fabric in the middle but because it was made of cardboard it's fairly flexible but if you are worried about this you don't have to wrap as much fabric around as I did. Uh, now it's time for kind of the fun part. It's just time to decorate it and figure out what kind of design I want to do. I like to get a bunch of potential pieces together beforehand and then play around with them. So for this I had some old pieces of lace, a bunch of dollar store hearts, and a bunch of Halloween charms and stuff like that. I'm really indecisive about designs so often if I'm having trouble choosing I'll take pictures with different options. That way I can flip through my phone really quickly and decide much more easily what I like to do. For this I'm taking this wooden heart that I got ages ago from the dollar store and painting it with some black acrylic paint because I wanted it to be nice and have this black and red gothic theme. I kind of wish I had more red and black lace but I was running a little bit low and I had a lot of other projects I wanted to do so I didn't make it as froofy as perhaps I could have. I also wanted to paint the inside so it was a little more professional but I didn't shake the paint beforehand it was the most disgusting watery mess um but yeah we just go ahead and get a nice layer of paint in there i originally thought i could live without it being painted hence why i put the fabric down first but then i was like you know what i can't deal with this ideally i would have put the paint down first so that i didn't have to worry about getting it on the fabric but that's fine so i have these felt heart patches that i got also at the dollar store ages ago and to make the ruffles that you always see in these kind of valentine's projects it's just a matter of taking a really long piece of ribbon or lace or whatever and folding it over itself while you glue it all down around the object that you want to cover in ruffles the more even your pleats are the better but it's okay also if that's not the thing if you have a piece of lace that's pre-ruffled like this red one you could also just glue it around without folding it over all my lace I tend to get from the thrift store, so this is all from like secondhand people's scrap projects and I love being able to give it new life in this fun way. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just gluing around two layers of the lace so we get this nice contrast. And I wanted some lace around the heart box itself, so I'm going ahead and doing a big ruffle along that. Since I had a limited amount of lace for this, I had to pre-plan the ruffle spacing to make sure I would have enough space because it takes a lot more fabric if you're trying to make a ruffle. I also find it easier with heart shapes to do half of it at a time. That way you have like crisper lines, I guess, at the centers, like the top and the bottom centers. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going ahead and folding my ruffles all down along the heart shape. 
and I wanted to cover up the kind of ugly glue dots that we see, so I'm taking some red lace that has that pre-ruffle in it and just gluing it down over top of the black lace. Now I have a low temp glue gun but I still wouldn't recommend using your hands like I do when you're doing these kinds of projects. You can buy these like finger protectors I think at the dollar store so um, probably use those instead of doing whatever nonsense this is. I just lost the feeling in my fingertips long long ago. Um, so this doesn't bother me too much, but I don't recommend- this is unsafe, don't do this. Regardless, going ahead and just gluing the lace all around. Like I said, you could use some E6000 or some glue that is like extra strong, but I just didn't have the patience to like wait around for that to dry. So to me, there's nothing wrong with hot glue in projects like this. Um, just going ahead and gluing it all around until it's nice and covered. Now this is what I was talking about with me being really indecisive about placement of stuff. So first I had this like velvet bat that was from a different project, this plastic bat that I got at the dollar store, I had these little skeleton hands that I was considering, I thought those were pretty cute, and then with the like brellac heart that I'd painted, maybe this like sacred heart charm, this other like kind of old bat jewelry that I was considering putting in there, and in the end of the day, yeah, I just kind of consulted Cage, took a bunch of pictures, but played around a lot with different designs before I got it done. I thought it would be cool to maybe do like a spider or something, um, but yeah, I'm really indecisive about these things, but I think it's nice to give yourself a lot of options if you have them. Otherwise, it's also cool if you only have like one piece of jewelry and that's going to be your focal point, you know, and if that's the case, do as you will. No shame in that. I just have hoarded a lot of Halloween <laughs> and thrifted um, craft supplies over the years, and I'm excited to use it now. And um, it wasn't quite roughly enough, so I decided to add one more piece of lace. Basically, the larger your drop of glue, the more likely it is to have a glue dot. So when you're making the ruffles, it's a lot easier to have these like larger, messy splotches. But when you're just sewing things around kind of straight, it's easier to hide it a little bit. And obviously it will poke through a tiny bit, especially if you're using lace. But I just kind of resigned myself to that fact. I did really like the idea of having this red heart in the middle, so I'm going ahead and gluing that down. I'm also so scared of centering things badly, but I'm bad at measuring. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can always measure if you are also scared of that, but I think eyeballing things is usually good enough. Then gluing the heart down, and I ended up going with this little silver bat charm that I got online forever ago in the center. I think it makes a really, really good centerpiece, and it's quite elegant. I also have these skeleton hands that I got at the dollar store. I'm just clipping off the little loop piece from the bottom to make it less obvious that it was like from a dollar store piece of jewelry and then arranging it around the heart shape so it kind of looks like it's being held and then just using my glue gun to attach that down to the lace and I think it's looking quite nice like I said a little bit more simple I could have definitely gone like super wild and done like loads and loads more layers of black and red lace but I think it's quite elegant and understated and that's the final result of the outside um, then for the bottom of it I just decided to do a super simple layer of black paint on the bottom to just cover up the old turtles information I did I think three layers to get it nice and open opaque, but that solved it and I think it looks good. Now for the inside, it came with this little plastic insert, and for this I'm using another piece of leftover scrap fabric. This I got from the thrift store and I had made a cape out of previously. Just cutting out, again, a piece that is bigger than the object I'm trying to cover, and this time quite a bit bigger. I wanted it to be quite baggy, so it had that kind of nice, like, drapey, loose satin feel. And I'm just gluing the fabric all around. I wish that I had done it looser. Um, I did it way too tight, in my opinion, but it's fine. It looks okay. I'm placing it in just to make sure it'll still fit before I fully glue it down, but it looks good. So once I confirm that, I can go ahead and continue to glue it down all around using my hot glue gun. If your plastic container has a lot of compartments, I think it's extra important to glue your fabric on really loosely if you want to do this. And if your plastic container is like welded to the bottom of the box, you might have to just use an X-Acto knife or something to very carefully cut out the insert so that you can add the fabric in a way that looks really nice and smooth and maybe just like paint the outside but yeah also the inside was looking quite sploshy because i'd only done one layer before so i'm going ahead and making it more opaque with a second layer and that's it that's done that's the first box um now i'll show you the rest of my collection but i think it's really cool what you can take from just like 
making a, a random grocery store turtles box into this very like in my opinion, elevated gothic piece. All right, let's get into more of these. Okay, so that's it for the tutorial portion of this video. Now I just wanna show you all the freaking boxes I made because originally I was like, oh, I'll just make like one really spooky, like vampiric, gothic y, dark red and like black one. And then I was like, oh, but it would also be fun to make like kind of a more punk one. And I was like, oh, but like, what about all these classic like horror couples like The Bride and Frankenstein or like Morticia and Gomez and like this kind of thing. So I was like, okay, I have to make a couple of those. And I was like, oh, Oh, but this is like kind of a monster high thing so like maybe I'll make it. So I just ended up making like a whole bunch of them and I'm just gonna show you um, the ones I made as well as give you some other example ideas of like ones that you could make potentially if like you know these ideas are speaking to you I'll show you the one that I showed you the process of making of last uh, but this is the second one that I ever made I wanted to do like more of like a classically punk theme so I'll scoot over so I can like add in pictures next to me but I think this one's really cute this one is actually Cage's favorite that I made so the first step in this project was I put like a black piece of velvet on this side and then a red piece of plaid just like old scrap fabric I had on the other side glued them down then attached the lace around this side the black to contrast with the red and then the red to contrast with the black I bunched it all up and then I put these little iron-on studs on the like punk side and then these little red roses on the this side feels a little bit more gothic overall and this side feels a little bit more punk overall but I tried to overlap the elements as well <laughs> so I have like this like X safety pin um, I use these little heart shaped bead letters to write out till death and I kind of made a mistake the first time I don't know why I thought till had two L's in it and I was looking at it after and I was like absolutely not so um it's it's missing it's got like a little blank spot of glue but that's fine uh, but it says till death and then there's like a sword which like feels a little bit more gothic because originally I was thinking I'd do like this side purely like romantic goth and this side purely like more like classic like 80s punk but then I thought it would be cool to more just like mix it up so I have like the sword that feels like it would belong more on this side or like the cheetah print heart that feels like it would belong more on this side but yeah my idea for this was I love romantic gothic and vampiric subcultures and music and fashion styles and all that but punk also has a incredibly sweet place in my heart and it was a really really big part of like my teenage years so this box is supposed to be melding like my romantic goth vampiric love of alternative subcultures with like my punk more like hardcore and like plaid and everything DIY and spiky and studs and all that like putting those together into one Halloween box but I think it would be a really cute idea also if like maybe you and your partner are in like slightly different aspects of like an alternative subculture like maybe one of you is more like pastel goth and the other is more like vampiric goth or if you're emo and scene or like whatever you want to do I think it would be really cute to just like do like a half and half box with those two elements I also added just like a random chain at the bottom and I use little safety pins to put the heart together and I added some little metal studs on this side too. I need to still paint the back but this was originally just a Reese's box that I got at the grocery store and I think it's so freaking cute. And the sentiment behind it just means a lot to me. And the fact that it's Cage's favorite also makes it extra special in my heart. Okay, so that's my kind of punky, gothy one. Now, the thing that really inspired me this was those super froofy, like 60s Valentine's boxes. So I wanted to make one really, really in that style, um, but with a pastel goth touch. So that's where this came in. So with this, I just layered loads and loads of pink and white lace, all of it's thrifted. I added little pink bows. I added pearl, faux pearls and like little strings of faux pearls. And then these felt hearts I got at the dollar store years and years ago. And then like I encircled them with pearls to make them extra fancy. Uh, the Ouija charm, I think I got it on AliExpress and I got like a pack of them and I made a pair of earrings out of some of them, but I still had some leftovers and I thought they'd work really well. With this also, after I'd made it, I was like, wait, this seems familiar. And I realized that Midge Munster made a video really similar to this, maybe a year or two ago. I'll link it below, uh, but it's called Ouija Be My Valentine. And it's all about like making a Valentine's Go Ouija board kind of thing. And I think it's a super fantastic idea. So um, yeah, I just wanted to shout that out and also be like, I, I, I don't want to seem like I'm copying because it's a really great idea, but yeah, uh, this one is kind of different, but I think it looks really, really cute. And for this one, I made the back kind of nice also. I had a bunch of old silky pink handkerchiefs, so I used them to line the outside of the box, and then I tied like a ribbon around the side and made it open 
like this because the original way that this box was structured was like it had a little cardboard flap and after I put the ribbon over it I was like oh no I just made the box inaccessible so I cut a new hole and made the flap and I think it works out and I think it's very cute very sweet little Ouija heart box and Further, I just want to say, if you don't want to use these as a regular box or you're thinking like this would look better as a display piece, you could also like hang a little hook and put it on the wall, which is what I think I will do for a lot of these. Um, I'm going to try to bring them to the market eventually and see if I can sell any of them. If they don't sell, that's fine too, but I just had so much fun making them and I think maybe they would look cute in people's houses as like little decors or if they want to like put jewelry in it or yeah, use them as gift boxes like Valentine's boxes, whatever you want to do. I think there's a lot of possibilities out there. Now in that similar vein, I wanted to make another super floofy one, but with like a bit of a gory twist. Uh, so for this one, I did white lace and then splattered it with red paint so it would look like blood. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a really cool theme for a box. It reminds me very much of like a wedding box that like got destroyed by a vampire or like perhaps it's like a Romeo and Juliet situation where it's like this forbidden love that ended in heartbreak and tra- I don't know. This just feels very romantic and normally I would go with like a lot of black and dark and all of this, but I think that there's something really ghostly and spooky in a different way about like doing just pure white and red and I added a little sword in the center and also added a bunch of pearls just like lining everything. So yeah, basically I have <laughs> loads and loads of lace that I've gotten all from the thrift store and this project was a great way to use a lot of it up. Uh, this was originally done on a Paw Patrol Valentine's box. You're supposed to open one of these cardboard sides and it's horrible and I hate it. And also I really apologize for my camera not picking this up at all. I will insert all the pictures next to me. But yeah, I think this is really fun. My original idea with it was to make it like very ghostly and tattered and do like whites and grays and like maybe moss growing over it. But then it just turned into instead doing like a blood spattered white thing. So. I think this is cool, but I also think a ghostly version would also be cool if you wanted to do. And, like shred the lace and add all sorts of like gray tatters all over it and maybe like some moths, a very like corpse bride kind of vibe. I think that would be cool. So I really wanted to do one with uh, like a black and white theme and also Morticia and Gomez Adams have always been, I think for a lot of people, like spooky couple goals. <laughs> um, so I decided to pay homage to them with this little project and it's a black and white uh this was originally like a baby onesie or something that i had originally bought uh to use in like doll custom work um and i had a bunch of the leftover fabric so i used it to line the back of this originally i tried painting the black and white stripes but it didn't look very nice so onto the fabric it went <laughs> and then i lined the outer edge with some ruffly black lace that i just ruffled myself and then the inside I put their picture that I just printed out and then glued onto a wooden heart and then stuck that on. Uh, before I'd stuck it on I had glued the lace around in the ruffle patterns um, and it just looks so cute. I love this picture of them. They're so sweet. They're so romantic. I was originally thinking to keep the whole thing black and white but I decided to add just a pop of red with the red roses for Morticia and then like a little dagger for Gomez on the other side but yeah I think it's fun that the only color is like the red in there but if you wanted to take it off I think a purely black and white valentine would also be a very very beautiful look. So yeah spooky couples is definitely an idea that you can do. On that note I wanted to do one of Frankenstein's monster and the bride and I always find it kind of funny that like people will put them in like romantic mood boards and stuff because in the movie like she just comes alive right at the end and she doesn't like him at all. Like she's very freaked out and stuff. So I always found it odd, but just because like aesthetically they're so beautiful together and because like they seem to have this very like romantic image in like a lot of horror movie fan imaginations, I, I decided that they had to be one of my spooky couples that I pay homage to with this. So this is the box. And this is one that I wanted to show that if you didn't want to use fabric or you don't have fabric, you can also just paint it. Um, so I've got the bride side with like the black hair and like the squiggle and then Frankenstein's monster side with like the green and the stitches. I also added just some bolts or screws or something that I found in the hardware drawer to his side. And then this is ribbon that I put all around. I wanted to show that you didn't have to use lace to make your ruffles. You can also use ribbon. Um, and then I added lace behind it though, just to, just to give 
that little extra vibe. I originally wanted to put a picture of Frank and the Bride in the setter, but it didn't look very good, so I ended up putting it on the inside instead because it just covered up too much of the design. I also just added these little painted like stitches in the center, which I think really ties the whole thing together. And last night, I added a layer of glow-in-the-dark paint to the white squiggle side, uh, so in the dark, the bride's hair thing glows electrically, which I think is really fun. I just, I love adding glow-in-the-dark elements when I can to stuff, and I always forget that I have like glow-in-the-dark paint and fabric paint, and it's like, just, just use it, just use it on stuff. So yeah, I think it looks really good. I think it's a really cute concept. I know this is another one of those like half and half sort of ideas that I talked about, uh, but also with like the scoop boogie couple and showing that you can like use paint instead of fabric. So yeah, that's so why I wanted to show this kind of idea. And I just painted directly onto the cardboard and it worked out okay, just needed a couple layers. And like I mentioned, I wanted to do a Monster High themed one. So this was when I was out of heart-shaped boxes and I didn't want to buy more from the grocery store and I was waiting for Cage to buy me more. Um, so while I was waiting, I remembered that I had a little zombies coffin uh, tucked away in my drawer somewhere because I was like, I can probably use this for something eventually. And lo and behold, I did. And I think it looks really, really cute. I did a little Twyla coffin box. I think that coffins are a great idea for like an extra touch to that spooky Halloween element. You don't have to use a zombies one. I have a lot of like wooden ones that I've found at the dollar store during Halloween, but worst comes to worst, you can make one out of cardboard relatively easily. I'm bad at it, but there are tutorials online that you can follow, because uh, I remember trying to do that to make myself like DIY purses back in the day. <laughs> Uh, this is the inside. I didn't change anything because I thought this kind of suited Twyla, but on the outside I put layers of purple and teal ribbon with little pearlies, and then on the back I just I put the coffin down on a piece of cardboard and then traced around it and then cut that out, covered that in satin, glued it down, and then glued that to the box so it just has a nice finishing backing kind of thing. I also did the same thing so it has like a nice satiny insert on the interior so it looks nice and fancy. I glued multiple layers of lace all around this coffin, one like around the bottom edge and then one here and then one there. I put a piece of teal velvet as the very base and then a piece of black spiderweb fabric over top of that. I have a sticker. <laughs> My parents for Christmas, they got me a bunch of these Monster High Fun kits and they came with like stickers and all sorts of stuff so I used some of the stickers for uh, this this project. So it's just like a black wooden heart that I put the sticker on and because there's a lot of bug motifs in Twyla's design I added these little flies I think that I got at the dollar store around Halloween and then these little bows around and it just looks so froofy, so cute. I love this little coffin box. I hope it still seems coffin shaped enough. The black pearls I think help kind of sell it maybe but it's just yeah very sweet very adorable Monster High Fru Fru Halloween Valentine's situation. I think that's adorable. Um, and after I'd made that, I was feeling good about it, but I was feeling like this wouldn't be complete if I didn't also make a Draculaura one. So we had to do that. It's a little bit on the simple side, but I think it looks nice. Again, I used ribbon for the ruffle that I made around the edge instead of lace. There is a little bit of black lace around, and then a black lace bow at the bottom. I have the black painted piece of wooden heart, which again, these wooden hearts I just got at the dollar store and attached lace around and then pearls around and then again, the sticker with more pearls around it and a little bat sequin at the top. The bat sequin I got at the dollar store around Halloween. And I think it looks really precious. I think if you have like a Monster High partner in your life that is just like obsessed with Monster High, this would be such a cute gift for them. Like, hello? Little Dra like Draculaura, will you be my Valentine? You could put a picture of Draculaura and Claude on there, or Draculaura and Laguna from G3. Just wanted to show Monster High, I think, is a very good candidate for this kind of thing. And if you don't have Monster High stickers, you can always just print out pictures of your favorite character online. I also figured this video wouldn't be complete without a proper Valloween, as in Halloween color, Valentine's Day <laughs> design. So this one's really cute. This is another one of Cage's favorites. I think it's precious. Um, it's again on this 
I still need to make the inside of the box nice, but it, this is what the inside of the box looks like right now. And I used this orange ribbon around the edge. This ribbon, when I had bought some Halloween hand towels, they came all wrapped up with like an orange bow, and I kept the ribbon from that bow in my fabric stash and finally found a use for it, which was to make this ruffle all around. And I used, I think, two bows because I bought multiple sets of hand towels, and I think they look really cute. I added a piece of lace around that, and then the backing on it is a old Halloween hand towel. The towel itself wasn't very absorbent, um, so I figured it would be better as just kind of like background for something or like some scrap fabric. So that's what I used here, and I think it looks really precious. This cat picture, last year in Edmonton, I got a pack of Halloween napkins that all have this vintage cat design on it, so I just cut out one of them, glued it onto my heart-shaped piece of wood, and used it as the centerpiece. I think it looks so cute. Uh, the orange little paper roses I found at the thrift store, and I have these two little ghosties at the bottom, which just feel so appropriate and romantic for Halloween. And these were on a pair of earrings that I had found at the thrift store around Halloween, and I just thought they were like a perfect, adorable little like Halloween couple to add to this. This feels so 80s and so tacky, and I adore it. This was very much the vibe that I was trying to go for, just like super corny, tacky, froofy Halloween thing. I remember when I was younger like seeing some pictures of really fancy like Valentine's boxes online that were all filled with like vegan chocolates that were um, all skull shaped and had these like very like macabre themes and like anatomical hearts and stuff and I was just like this is the epitome of romance like just looking at all these beautiful boxes and being like oh my god if only I had someone who would give me that and then I'm like I could just give that to myself I could just make that and have that like literally if you want something like that just ask or just make it it's it's it is what it is um so yeah i had so so much fun making these and it just like really fulfilled that dream of like an incredibly fancy froofy gothic fluffy valentine's kind of thing uh, so yeah this is the last one that i will show which is the first one that we've seen uh but yeah got the red velvet Got the little bat, got the skeleton hands. This feels super classically gothic-y, romantic-y. I think if you had like a goth girlfriend, this would be much appreciated. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's a really, really cute thing to do. Cause like as a spooky person, I think it's hard to find um, appropriately spooky things like in mainstream stores around Halloween. Obviously like Etsy has a lot of really cool things. And like I mentioned, there are those like vegan chocolates that are like heart shaped and skull shaped and just incredible. And I'm sure they still make those or similar things that you can find. Uh, but if you don't have the money or time to do that, pick up like a dollar twenty-five one covered in some lace and your person I think will be so, so appreciative of that in my opinion. I might be wrong, but I think it's really cute. Or if you just want to make it for yourself as either a box or a wall decor or whatever, whatever, I think that's also totally valid and a really cute idea. Okay, now I do want to talk about stuff that you could put in the box that would be like romantic, kind of spooky, gothy gift ideas if you are interested in that kind of stuff. So let's go into that. And also I will give other ideas of like motifs and characters and stuff that you could base your box on if none of these are really your style or whatever. Things that you could put inside. And I will also mention this, if you are putting edible things inside, do not paint the inside of the box. And just maybe like leave the box as is on the inside if you're putting food inside it, because I don't want to be poisoning anyone. Non-food items that you could put inside though. You could put mix CD, I think uh, playlists, like especially when they're like on a physical CD are for me so nostalgic and so romantic. So I think if like you made one of all like spooky love songs to give to your person, I think that would be really, really cute. Also, if you're not giving it to a romantic partner, a friend or making it for yourself is also totally freaking valid and adorable and do what you will. If your partner has dietary restrictions and you can't find fancy vegan or gluten-free or whatever it is that you're looking for treats for them, you could make some yourself, like make your own cookies that um, adhere to their restrictions and put them in there. I think that would be really cute. Or if they don't like the chocolate or are allergic or whatever and you don't want to make things, you could put in whatever their favorite snack is. You could put like a little thing of like tea light candles or like little bath treats, like little like bath salts or, or like dried flowers that they could put in the bath. I think that would be really romantic and sweet especially if you can like take a bath together later I think that would be very very like intimate bonding moment if your partner is at all in the spooky witchy kind of magical arena of things I think they would really appreciate like some incense cones maybe some crystals some herbs um, I think this is extra cool when you have 
these kind of boxes that have the little compartments. I remember when I was like younger and 14 and stuff seeing people like fill the little boxes with like different crystals and stuff and gemstones and being like that's so cool but what if you had like yeah crystals and tea lights and herbs and maybe like little bones or teeth or like kind of interesting stuff like that sorry i'm reading all of this on my phone because i read it down a while ago i think a lot of spooky people appreciate taxidermy and bones and that kind of thing and that would also be a really good gift to get them but please make sure that it's like ethically harvested and all that um, same with like insects maybe they might like, uh, though that might be a little bit delicate, so be careful if you're gifting them insects. Other ideas. Dead black rose. I remember that was my dream to get a dead black rose, like from a love interest or whatever, and Cage got me one. I remember when we first started dating after I told him, because I was like, oh, it's like such a silly, stupid fantasy. And he found one for me, and it was just, oh, it's so precious. I have it. It's somewhere around here. But yeah, I think a dead black rose, or just in general, dried flowers, would be a really cute thing to put in a box. If you want to go kind of creepy and like Victorian, I think a lock of hair is so romantic and also like kind of spooky. You tie it in like a nice ribbon and just, yeah, a lock of your lover's hair that's like very vintage, very very spooky, very romantic. A locket or spooky jewelry in general, um, like if it has bats on it, if it has like something red, uh, little fangs, little coffins, little bones, little swords, that kind of thing. I think spooky jewelry is always much appreciated for Valentine's. Enamel pins. I think a lot of spooky people, especially if they're more on the punk side, you might want to get them like pins and patches and your mix CD with like more punky stuff. Um, Mini perfume samples. I am such a fan of tiny perfume samples. I think that's extra like romantic for Valentine's Day and like they would fit really well in these kind of boxes. Um, doodles or little, little romantic notes that you've written them or like little poems, song lyrics, anything romantic and spooky and just lovely and haunting and whatever. If you guys are like vampire fans like me and Cage, you can buy them those little vampire teeth that like go into your mouth. Um, lots of times they come in a little coffin which is cool but you could put them in like a little velvet pouch um, with all the stuff because they're very small and like will fit in there quite nicely. I think a lot of spooky people that wear makeup would appreciate dark cosmetics especially if they have have, like cool packaging. I have this black skull lipstick that I think is super super fun. It's from the dollar store but I love it and I think the packaging is really cute. I have this black lipstick with a black butterfly on it. So like black lipstick or black nail polish or other like little spooky perfumes with like cool uh, packaging. I think um, Voltaire on his website sells a lot of very interestingly packaged dark cosmetics so that would be like a really cute Valentine's gift. Spooky DVDs, if you guys are into horror movies like me and Cage, how cute would it be to open up your Valentine's box and it's just filled with like Hellraiser and Saw movies or Buffy or whatever your like spooky thing that you like to bond over together. I think that would be really cute to put like DVDs in there. Um, a photo of you and your person, especially if it's like a Polaroid or one of these like photo booth kind of strip ones. Or if you don't have a Polaroid or whatever of them, you could print one out and then decorate it if you want, especially with like spooky stickers or little hearts or little doodles or whatever you want to do. I think that would be really, really fun. Also tea samples would fit really well in there. A tiny book of poetry or like a romantic little zine, uh, cute stickers, maybe a coupon of your favorite local coffee house or concert tickets. I think concert tickets would be incredibly romantic to put in there. Mini figurines or a keychain. These are just ideas. Obviously you wouldn't put all of it in or like if you want to go for it. Um, but I think these are all just like cute little ideas of like stuff that you could give your Valentine person as a really sweet little gift. Dude, if I got like a Valentine things that had like some little like heart-shaped handmade cookies and like a mix CD and like some dead flowers dude and like a lock of hair oh my god I would die that's so cute <laughs> you know so yeah I think there's a lot of cute ideas that you can do to celebrate Halloween I've always just been a super romantic at heart I think and I've always just loved the gushy frou-frou love stuff and I think when you like mix it with like a vampire or like gothy or punk or whatever aesthetic that you want to do I think it's really really sweet and yeah I hope that this video gave you some ideas of stuff that you could maybe make or to give to your significant other or if you don't have a significant another you don't want one or whatever whatever you just want to make it for yourself I hope that's fun for you I wanted to also just give other ideas of ones that I didn't make but I think would make cute ideas in case um, any of these don't appeal to you but you want more options of stuff you could do um, so for spooky couples that I was thinking of um, Chucky and Tiff Spike and Drusilla those are my like absolute favorite Buffy couple but you can pick whatever like movie or show or whatever is your favorite Lily Munster and Herman Munster uh, Poe and his muses 
Dracula and his brides, Creature from the Black Lagoon and the lady that he kidnapped, like well, whatever you want to do. You could do lots of interesting uh, spooky stuff like that. Oh, Jack and Sally from Tim Burton I think would be really fun and in general I think there's a lot of Tim Burton characters that would work well like Edward Scissorhands and the lady whose name is escaping me right now but Winona Ryder plays her and a steampunk one I think would be really fun. I was close to making one but it just didn't end up happening and also just whatever your significant other is into, whether that's a specific band or you guys are really into your pet, like me and Cage, I feel like I could just make a lemon and tuna one. Whatever you want to do, just print out pictures of that thing, cover it in some stickers or whatever you want to do. You don't even have to do lace and stuff. I just really like the frou frou aesthetic, but you could just like paint it and keep it like very bare bones, no lace, no frills, just pictures and collages and like stuff like that. Literally whatever you want to do, the world is your oyster. I think that whatever you make your partner will appreciate it or if you're just keeping it I think it'll just be a fun exercise in self-love to make something for yourself so regardless I think it's just it's just about having the fun of making it and like don't put too much pressure on yourself for it to be perfect because I think the more you have fun with it and the more you like let go of like having a intensely beautiful perfect exact product um, exactly like it looked like in your head the more it just is fun and creative and you get a really fun result in the end. Hopefully this video is fun or enjoyable or interesting or entertaining or something along those lines. I hope you and any loved ones have a fantastic and spooky Halloween season. Let me know if you end up making any of these or like what you put in them. I wish you all the luck in the world and I hope you have a wonderful and happy Halloween um, whether you celebrate it or not. Give yourself a big hug from me and I hope to catch you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye! Bye.